What's up guys? So I want to actually today talk about the quadrant of object and subject. So I want to say, you know, how this really wraps and ties into my other videos about the quadrant of awareness and the quadrant of identity. And they both all correlate together and you can kind of attribute each quadrant to the other quadrants in those videos. So I want to first begin with the subject objects and I really emphasize the S on that because the uh, subject object relationship is up here. The subject objects relationship is has its own quadrant because the subject objects is very narrow and focused experiencing. So your own awareness is kind of associated with what you, of course, your awareness is always associated with what you are aware of. But in this notion, we become much more identified with like being a person, like being someone that is uh, rigid, that is very, uh, there's an idea that you are somebody and this idea is completely not factual. Like it's, you can, you can muster up anything to prove that your identity is the way it is, but it's going to make, it's not going to make any sense. It's not going to make any logical sense to anybody why you are this, because there's no really proof, so to speak. There's no real, uh, action that you are this that you're saying you are so you know if you hold a glass of water and you talk about how you know if you look if your body holds up a glass of water you it's okay that you say this is me like my body is me and that the glass of water is mine right because you're holding it so you are it is you like you can say that and that's normal that's acceptable like people understand what you're saying but if you talk about like my body is mine and how the glass of water is me then there's clearly gonna be some kind of uh disconnection there with other people and there's gonna be if you actually believe that you are the glass of water like uh that's going to really, you know, not connect with people because, uh, ultimately you, what they see and what they identify as you being is not that. So that which is the subject objects is really, uh, non, I'm not, it is valid, but it's it's valid in the way that you are no longer really uh, believing it yourself. I mean, you are believing it, but it's not that there's a portion of you that's really disconnected with your own being, with your own uh, sense of realness, your own sense of it's lost touch with what you actually are. So... Uh, that's why you, you are delusional and want to associate yourself with many objects and many things because you want to be real on a subconscious level, but you don't know that's what you want. So you go on thinking and believing in things that really don't have any, uh, you know, that you're not acting on, that you're not really participating with and really not, uh, don't have any connection with really. And that don't give you a kind of essence and overall feeling of well being. When you are this way, you know, you will look for anything and everything to, to give you that because you don't know for yourself that you are, your own well-being. So you always go out into the objects. All right. So the next one is a subject object is I am. This is very rigid. 
you know, you, you talk about like, I am a doctor, I am a lawyer, I am a parent, I am a son, I am a daughter, I am a graduate of ASU, I am a homeowner, I am a employee at this company, you know, it goes on and on. I am a boy, I am a girl. So this is very rigid, the subject-object relationship. And that's what we're most mostly used to, right? Uh, because this is very oriented in like matter and uh, things that have happened before, like things that are actually real. So that's, that's the subject-object relationship is that you are really um, just as much as you've as, have experienced in this life and like in this body kind of like not to say that there's it's good bad right or wrong none of this is good bad right or wrong i'm just saying that the i am awareness i am a i am a artist even you know i when somebody asks is like what do you do oh i am a uh i'm a writer you know, I uh, write for the newspaper, or they say, what do you do? I am a consultant. I am a salesman. Uh, I do sales. I'm in retail. You know, these are all fixed notions of identity, and that's the subject-object relationship. Like, it's very here and now. It's very, like, a lot of stuff based on uh, your validity as a uh, person in society <laughs> okay so hopefully that makes sense and i know that each of you guys can extract some kind of experiential relationship and understanding of each of these so uh the the pure subject and the no object is the i i so this can best be described when an artist is at in their work when someone is in the act of creating uh, there, it's like, it's like a rush of like, I, I have to do this. Like, I have to get this out of me. Like I have to, it's not that you identify with it. It's that it passes through you. Like it needs to go through you. You need to go through it. And that is the pure subject, no object relationship. And the, I, the real, the form of, uh, self-experiencing. You know, like, you have to experience, like, you know, writing this song or, you know, uh, painting this picture. You have to go through and experience that. That that moment when the artist is in creation or the craftsman is in creation or whatever, you're a carpenter, you know, when you're in the moment of, like, no thinking, that's the moment of really I-I. Like, you are really fully there, uh experiencing fully like what it is that uh that you're inspired to do this is really uh a, a place of inspiration it's a place of uh constant uh influx of thoughts and constant influx of ideas so it's a very flexible uh you know volatile space to be at um, because you're, you're not anything, you're not identifying with anything or anybody. You're just this, you're just the experiencer. You're just some, something again, you're not a person. You're just something doing this activity and doing something, creating something. Uh, you know, you don't have to necessarily be like physically doing anything. You could also just be experiencing from like a uh from a observer role like uh someone who is uh completely in this uh experience of watching a movie or watching a show or watching uh, a dog fight or god forbid but watching a sports or something like you are in this pure experiencer role and you forget all other time locations and places you need to be or places you want to go. And you're completely enveloped in this moment where you are I, I, 
you, there's nothing to grasp onto. There's no more identity. There's no more, uh, nothing to hold for you other than just this pure, raw emotion, whether it's good, bad, right, or wrong. It's just this pure subjective experience, okay? So the next one is beyond experiencing. It's no subject. The beyond I. This one is, I can't really speak too much from experience on this. And this is kind of like the unknowable, the unexperienceable, the you can't possibly relate this to anybody and them to actually understand it. Like, you you can't you can't really give them a, an experience at all. You all you can do is kind of guide them, and they have to go through the experience themselves. Kind of like being experiencing beyond experiencing is uh, really it's hard to understand as a human being, right? Making a YouTube video right now, but the beyond I is a conceptionless moment and an identity where there is nothing. There is just foreverness. There is just permanent foreverness that is all connected. And I know it sounds very, uh, you know, abstract and something that you may not be able to kind of understand, but it's definitely something that is that can be uh, experienced on an inspirational role. On it can exp it inspire you to you know to want to know foreverness. It, it inspires you to want to know permanence, and it it wants you to know that the allness, the everything, the all pervading, omnipotent all-inclusiveness that is not separate to the object and the subject you know it's not it's not it does not have an opposite it is not subject to an objective reality that is physical so beyond experiencing no subject is a very non-physical state you know like I don't even know if I can call it death but it, in some way, shape, or form, it is like a releasing or a uh, shedding of all experience, of all past, of all future. It's just completely timeless in a way. Um, and it, it's, it's even that, it's, I wouldn't even call it timeless because it's that point where there was no time to begin with. So because you can only call timelessness a an actual thing if there was at one point time. So <laughs> I know, right? Wrap your head around it. But the beyond experiencing no subject is uh, forever. And it, it, there never was a beginning or ending. It just is constant, like, and it is completely neutral in my, in my uh, intuition. So... This, uh, this relationship with the I, with the relationship with awareness, is this beyond I is really uh, non-conceptual. <laughs> and this may not really help you as like a human being wanting to survive in the world and like make its way in society and like be a person and all. But, uh, you know, I can... I can uh, hopefully inspire that you to actually just imagine this uh, state of being that you are connected with all that is and ever will be and ever was and even connect with this portion of you that even connect with this idea or this possibility that you never were anything to begin with. You were never nothing to be compared to anything that existed. Okay? 
So thanks again for watching, guys, and uh, hopefully this helps. I'll see you on another video.